Say it with me, everybody. High effort content. Yeah, basically, I have nothing planned for this. So, like, hey, let's just talk about whatever the fuck we did. Because I sure as shit don't remember at this point. So, hey, first things first. Let's take a good, solid look at Unbound Knight Arrowell Zeo and then Navy Captain Landy. Um, the smart decision of going into this is to just straight up use, uh, Dark Corvus. <laughs> like, just straight up fucking throw Dark Corvus at this shit. But, like, no, 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 no. Because my, um, my martial artist Ken has next to no fucking ER, and then I have, like, 50? Oh, yeah, that's a lot of ER on fucking Lone Crest and Bologna. Yeah, let's just throw that on there with Christy and, like, hey, hey, it should work. No. <laughs> no, we get lucky as fuck. So, case in point, the reason why Dark Corvus would work into this is because you have two light units that would be going into him. He'd be building up Devil's Descent like an absolute motherfucker. You could then throw in shit like, say, Isaria, do S2 into that. Hey, cool, you have Devil's Descent immediately, and you also have uh, Soul Burn, because then you could be running with things like Unseen Observer. Bam, you can Soul Burn, Devil's Descent, go into the Navy Captain Landy, just say, get the fuck out of my fucking game. Because that's quite literally the only thing that's really a threat. So, we and our giga-brained, super, super smart notions decided to say, Hey, let's go into this with uh, Magic Scholar Doris, then Silver Tide Christie, and um, Lone Crescent Bologna. Now, to those of you who are watching this, you're already kind of seeing the problem here. We straight up weren't really able to utilize Christie's S3 to give attack buff to uh, Lone Crest and Bologna in the back because she got stunned on opening fucking turn from the S3 from Unbound Knight Arrowell. Thankfully for us, we don't get stunned a second time. So yeah, either that was 15 fucking percent on my side or just straight up we're right on the cusp of ER that's going into this shit. Either way, it still looks pretty fucking bad because we even soul burn S1 into the Navy Captain landing. We still don't kill it. We're going, we're doing right here. We get mega lucky and that we took a lot of like abuse from everything else going into us. We were able to, you know, do any of the bat backs that were going into them. We had attack buff, we had vigor, and we were just barely able to eke out the win to kill the Navy Captain landing. Now, to those of you watching now, it's like, well, why aren't you going to talk about the rest? Because, quite frankly, there's nothing else to fucking talk about. Undone Knight Arrowell and Zeo by themselves are not really a threat. Zeo is only going to go into whoever has the highest CR on his S3's turn, and his S1 is going to go into Doris. Doris can tank that like an absolute champ. She's, uh, she's one of the best Dark Bait units in the entire fucking game. She can straight up tank almost anything, except for perhaps, like, say... A soul burn Dark Corvus, but hey, lucky us, AI ain't smart enough to do that kind of shit. Huh? Cool. Now, going into this oh so wonderful fun match of C Phantom Cancer and Jenny Jingles, and who else? Oh, Arya for some fucking reason. But basically, with those two units in question, I decided to go, hey, let's go in and throw Albedo at this, and then along with that, we'll throw Shuna in there for the chance of stripping any of the other two units, as well as doing some form of heals, and then also Dragon Bride Senya for whenever we take the abuse from the Albe for the Albedo. Now, the problem that I did not really foresee was the fact that uh, Albedo with Aegis Unfold just on the field, whenever Genua takes his first turn with Rage from the Sea Phantom Volatus, he does not have attack buff. And because he doesn't have attack buff, he really doesn't do that much damage. Not enough damage to work to really be concerning. And because of that, well, straight up we don't proc the uh, we don't proc the S2 from Dragon Pride Senya. It just straight up doesn't happen. So then I'm left with another like situation which is really really weird because the Arya had no ER, so I wasn't expecting everything to fucking get put to sleep by Shuna. So because of that, I'm like, well, who do I go for? Do I go for Janu or do I go for Arya? So because I was on my turn with Albedo. I can't guarantee that I'm going to do enough damage to actually kill this Genua. This Genua has 10k HP, and on Dragon Bride Senya's turn, which you are going to see right up here because this kicks in, so we're going to go into like everything because we don't really have a choice, and I also don't need the Soul Burn here, it's really not important. But watch the damage right here. This is just shy of 10k. That straight up won't kill a Genua, and it won't proc immortality. Now, with 3F, and if you get lucky, because we straight up don't have a max 3F, hey, yo, SG, give me some more fucking bottles, dog. You want me to go ahead and buy some shit from your fucking store? Put some of that shit in the cash shop. I'll pay for it. I'm a filthy fucking whale. But, like, 
straight up, because we don't really have that opportunity to really do that, uh, yeah, we don't have a max 3 of, so I don't really feel like taking that risk. That was pretty much the main reason why I didn't just go Hamhawks Wild into Genua at the start, because I don't want to deal with Wild Dog Company immediately, along with not doing shit like, you know, hitting the immortality threshold. But either way, basically the biggest risk is we lost Albedo because Shuna just straight up can't keep up when it comes to healing. We don't have a form of, resi of res to really go into this. We'll see that particular strategy in the next fight. But before that, hey look, it's uh, Crimson Armin, Illinav, and Navy Captain Landy. You know what? Fuck this shit, because this is some counter shit if I ever fucking saw it. So basically, we're going to go in with Ran S2, S3. This is going to be a guaranteed soul burn into that. Strip these motherfuckers of all their crit resist because fuck Navy Captain Landy. Horrible, stupid, broken bitch. She does not deserve any of the fucking good shit that she's going to be getting anytime soon. But like either way, then we'll go into Astromancer Elena. Throw on that S3. Bam. Now we have whatever the fuck unique buff that is on her. I cannot remember what it is. But hey, counterattacks don't happen while that's there. Then we go into the one-two punch with Etta. So that's going to be the S2 soul burned into extra turn into S3. We happen to land the crits that we need. Everything was death broken. Fuck this team. Let's move on. <laughs> now, onto this fun shit. So this is another one of the Sea Phantom Cancers and Jenny Jingles, along with, this time, Senya. So the big thing that I fucked up immediately, because hey, this was a smart idea. However, I did not take into account just how far back I was going to be pushed and that my uh, Midnight Gala Lilius did not indeed get her turn. Because the plan was, she was going to go, then we were going to straight up go into the Senya, do a lot of damage into that, then we'll do a push up on the S3 or on the S2 from the uh, damage that S3 is going to do, then, you know... Um, Spirit, uh, Spirit Ice Lane will get her turn, you'll use S3, we'll have... Um, We'll straight up have our immortality, and then we'll use Blood Moon Haste for the sake of reviving Midnight Gala Lilis if we need to. Now, thankfully for us, we didn't get hit with a fucking Provoke from the Senya. Thank fucking Christ, because that was the only reason why we ain't fucking dead yet. So, we'll just have to go in and burn our, blow our load right there on Blood Moon Haste immediately, kill the Senya, and now we'll bring everything back. Now, thankfully for us, everything that came back has immortality. Now, it's good... But, um, Midnight Gala Lilius' S3 ain't gonna be doing shit, because everything I'm going into essentially doesn't really have a lot of HP, and because of that, well, we're just gonna be locked to the S1 doing damage. Which, hey, that's fine, but straight up we're not gonna have attack buff anymore, it just straight up isn't gonna happen. But hey, luckily for us, we'll go ahead and we'll get our strip right there onto the Genoa. We'll uh, deal with a good bit of damage. Proc Wild Dog Company. And now, more fun is happening. The good thing is, we still have Immortality on Midnight Gala Lilius. And we're going to be getting lucky right here because we're not really paying attention. But hey, uh, Rage isn't on uh, Sea Phantom Politis. So the dual attack does not happen from the Genoa. Because of that, we're in good fucking shit shape right now. Because now we're able to heal with uh, see, uh, the, with Spirit Isolene. Bam. Go all the way up. And now, okay, now it's time for Midnight Gale Lilius to go down. So, we've essentially got this shit in the bag. Because all we need is one more hit from, sea Fan uh, from uh, Spirit Isolene to go into the Genua. Or one more hit from the Blood Moon Haste. Which, hey, check this shit out. Soul Burn this. That's an attack buff. Well, let's strip that attack buff because that's a guaranteed strip. Then, extra attack. Fuck you! Get the fuck out of my game. Now, here's the other thing is where it's like, well, maybe I should do things like uh, uh, like a candlestick on things like Spirit Isolene. Honestly, I really feel like she needs Genua's artifact for the barrier. Because right now we're rocking Dust Devil, and Dust Devil is just a whole bunch of fucking RNG as to whether it's even going to fucking work or not. But like, hey, thanks, Blood Moon Haste. That's some good shit. And now we're going into an Unbound Knight Arrowell, a Urban Shadow Shoe, and a Navy Captain Landy. To which I then say, go fuck yourself. So we're going to S2 into the Ran. We're going to Soul Burn into the S3 into this whole fucking team. At least guarantee a strip or getting rid of the fucking uh, crit resist. Thankfully for us, we also happen to land a good old wonderful death break on everything. This also procs the S2 from the Astromancer Elena. Straight up gives us 10 souls and then... Uh, we're in good fucking shit. Good, good fucking shape right here. Because now it's time for the one-two punch from Meta. So here's the Soul Burn S2, Shazams, and then here is the S3. Hey, everybody. Get the fuck out with your stupid fucking crit resist. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> I don't want to fucking turn to this shit. Are you fucking crazy? But either way, now on to the last fight here. So this is Conqueror Elias, essentially going to be doing extra turn shenanigans. That's why Moon Bunny's here. That's why Benny Morrow's here. Oh shit, look, it's Benny Morrow's turn. Now, and then we also happen to get really lucky and also get attack buff right here. But then we forgot about Ravi's changes. So she straight up lost that defense break right there because we crit her. So yeah, we could have gone into Senya instead. But like, hey, whatever, doesn't matter. That was the entire reason why Charlotte's here. Because Charlotte will then be able to do critical hits into the anti-crit unit whatever like hey we'll have moon bunny take her turn in s3 give ourselves attack buff and then we'll straight up just kill whatever the fuck else that benny morrow was not able to kill so we kill conquer lilius and senya right there now all that's left is uh ravi and straight up she ain't looking so fucking tanky right now it's she's just uh i don't see the defense on there and hey one more hit going into the victorious flag ravi a lot of fucking help that's gonna do and hey it's fucking over well, that was quick. So anyway, that was the Guild War. Yay, we were here for almost 11 minutes. Woohoo! But either way, uh, definitely a sign of... Man, I really need to put some more Primo gear on Blood Moon Haste. So it was like, I was actually talking a lot of cash money shit on Blood Moon Haste, at least since like AI or Guild War related content, because I see him every now and then show up in Guild War teams, but I'm not really afraid of him. Because anytime people are utilizing Blood Moon Haste, it's because they have a unit that is a high priority kill target. And because it's a high priority kill target, well, you go for it, then that procs, that procs Blood Aura. But the thing is, you can manipulate the AI that Blood Moon Haste does. So, like, until they do something to either buff Blood Moon Haste where he straight up gets his S3 back whenever he has Blood Aura or just some means of, like, the AI doesn't use S3 immediately, like, right off the jump... He's just straight up going to be a fucking terrible hero on defense. But now on offense, on the other hand, yo, this motherfucker almost feels like he's required because of all this Genua horse shit that we're going into. Because basically the entire meta has shifted from like, oh, hey, counterattacks are your friend to basically, hey, just one tap that motherfucker. If we one tap that motherfucker, then we don't have to worry about this stupid RNG bullshit. That's kind of what it feels like right now. That's just, that's kind of how the game feels. And it's fucking awful. <laughs> like, I don't like playing that. I don't like fucking getting hit by it. But like, Hey, whatever. That's the name of the game that we're going into. And, uh, oh yeah, well, let's go ahead and bring this up as well. Hey, boys, we're still at that 301 roster limit. It's fucking awesome, SG. When are you going to do something about that? Oh, fucking never? All right, cool. Thanks. I appreciate that. But like, either way, boys, if you guys like this content, I don't know why you would, go ahead and hit that like button. Makes me feel good about myself. And you want to see more of my content, hit subscribe.